Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good day to you. This is Dr. Gaurav Agnihotri and today I am going to give a talk on the portal vein. The portal vein is a vein which drains the abdominal part of the alimentary tract, gallbladder, pancreas and spleen. It ensures that the substances ingested are first processed by the liver before they reach the systemic circulation. This is very important. Normally the portal pressure is 5 to 15 mmHg and when it Excrete, when it exceeds a critical limit, then we call the condition as portal hypertension. The clinical manifestations related to portal hypertension are caput medusae, that is tortuous enlarged and dilated veins in relation to the umbilicus, esophageal varices, these are tortuous enlarged and dilated veins in relation to the esophagus and hemorrhoids in which the patient may experience bleeding per rectum. So, I begin my talk on portal vein with these clinical aspects related to the portal vein. Now as I mentioned earlier, it is a large vein about 8 cm long which collects blood from abdominal part of alimentary tract, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen and conveys it to the liver. So it ensures that whatever substances are ingested, they are processed in the liver before they enter the systemic circulation. Now the figure on the left is showing the formation of the portal vein. Here we see that the splenic vein coming from the left side which I represent by my left finger, this splenic vein is joining the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein and this portal vein is formed behind the neck of the pancreas. So in the figure there in, on the screen you can see P represents the pancreas. 5 represents the superior mesenteric vein, 4 represents the splenic vein, 6 is the inferior mesenteric vein entering the splenic vein, 1 is the portal vein which is formed 8 cm long which divides into right and left branches. So once again the formation of the portal vein is important, it is very important to understand the concept regarding the formation of the portal vein. It is formed behind the neck of pancreas at the vertebral level L2. So, on the left side is the spleen, from here the splenic vein having a tortuous course comes towards the right side and then the superior mesenteric vein unites with it to form the portal vein, vertebral level L2 behind the neck of the pancreas. Now here on the right side only you have the C-shaped duodenum which has got a first part, a second part and a third part. Now this portal vein is formed then during its course, it has got an infraduodenal part, retroduodenal part and a supraduodenal part. So my this index finger is now representing the formed portal vein. It has got a infraduodenal part which is formed after union of splenic vein and superior mesenteric vein, a retroduodenal part and a supraduodenal part lying above the first part of duodenum. This part lies in the right free margin of lesser omentum. So here in the right free margin of lesser omentum above the first part of duodenum you have the portal vein, hepatic artery and the bile ducts. So posteriorly the portal vein is throughout related to the inferior vena cava. So let us see the slides once again. Now why this portal vein is called portal vein? This portal vein is called portal vein because the superior mesenteric vein which forms it begins in one set of capillaries in the abdomen and the portal vein once formed ends in another set of capillaries in the liver. So such an arrangement wherein the beginning is by capillaries and the end is also by capillaries is referred to as the portal system. So it is thus logical to call this vein the portal vein. So here again in this figure 5 is the superior mesenteric vein, 4 is the splenic vein and 6 is the pancreas, 7 is the C-shaped loop of duodenum. You can see the first part of duodenum here 
you cannot you see that uh, the portal vein is lying behind the first part of duodenum and then it is dividing into right and left branches the left branch is longer and narrower left branch is uh, marked by 3 in the figure while the right branch is marked by 2 in the figure so once again the formation it is formed behind the neck of pancreas by the union of superior mesenteric and splenic veins and the vertebral level is very important it is frequently asked to the students it is the second lumbar vertebra the c-shaped loop of duodenum lies at vertebral level l1 to l3 and it is at level of l2 that superior mesenteric unites with the splenic vein as you can see on the figure on in the figure on the left side the inferior mesenteric vein is draining into the uh, splenic vein and the portal vein is dividing into right and left branches and then these branches they enter the porta hepatis of the liver now course of the portal vein as i mentioned earlier uh, it lies first it is formed below the first part of duodenum then it goes behind the first part of the duodenum and then it enters the right free margin of the lesser omentum there is a pringles maneuver in which if bleeding is taking place then since the right free margin of lesser momentum contains portal vein and hepatic artery compression is done at the right free margin of lesser momentum to arrest the bleeding if the bleeding does not stop this means that the bleeding may be from the inferior vena cava so the relations of the portal vein are important now regarding the blood flow in the portal vein the flow is streamline flow now what is the meaning of streamline flow streamline flow indicates that two things are coming and they are not losing their entity when they are passing as a unit so two separate things are coming and they are not losing their entity as they are passing like a single unit so here what happens in case of portal vein is that the splenic vein it comes unites with superior mesenteric vein behind the level of at the level of l2 vertebra behind the neck of pancreas the blood in the superior mesenteric and the blood in the splenic vein it does not mix as it passes through the portal vein so the blood from the superior mesenteric prefers to go to the right branch of portal vein while blood from the inferior mesenteric prefers to go to the left branch of portal vein this explains a lot of things regarding the pathologies related to the liver so once again the flow in the portal vein is like the Sangam at Allahabad where two rivers Ganga and Yamuna meet but the water streams stay separate so here the flow is streamlined flow from below the superior mesenteric is coming then the splenic is coming they stay together as a unit but they do not mix and then again from the superior mesenteric blood goes to the right branch while from the splenic the blood goes to the left branch of portal vein portal vein during its course as i mentioned earlier also can be divided into infraduodenal retroduodenal and supraduodenal parts now regarding the termination of the portal vein uh, the transverse fissure about 5 cm long called porta hepatis is present in relation to the liver the portal vein ends at the right end of the porta hepatis by dividing into right and left branches now in this figure we can see the right branch of the portal vein and the left branch of the portal vein uh, once the right branch is formed in it the vein marked by 7 that is the cystic vein from the gall bladder is entering and then this right branch enters the liver left branch of portal vein it gives a branch to the caudate lobe uh, marked by 5 in the figure it uh, gives a branch to the quadrate lobe on the inferior surface uh, marked by 8 in the figure and then it receives uh, two veins uh, marked by 4 are the paraumbilical veins along the liver ligamentum teres and marked by 6 is the ligamentum venosum which is uh, connecting the left branch of portal vein to the inferior vena cava so these are the uh, tributaries we can say of the branches of the portal vein now once again the relations of the portal vein i told you that uh, the course can be divided into infraduodenal, retro duodenal and supraduodenal part now here i would like you to concentrate on the posterior relations if you see here posterior relations are the uh, inferior vena cava in all the three scenarios so supraduodenal part 
uh, is the part where the portal vein is going to lie in the right free margin of the lesser momentum and the Pringles maneuver can be uh, affected here. Posteriorly lies the inferior vena cava separated by the epiploic foramen. Right branch enters after receiving cystic vein into the right lobe of liver. Left branch is longer and narrower than the right branch. It traverses porta hepatis from its right end to left and furnishes branches to caudate and quadrate lobes shown by 5 and 8 in the figure. Just before entering the left lobe of liver, it receives paraemblical veins along ligamentum teres marked by 4 in the figure and ligamentum venosum marked by 6 in the figure. Now, the intrahepatic course is interesting as well as important. After entering liver, each branch divides and re-divides along with the hepatic artery to end ultimately in the hepatic sinusoids. Now, students should always remember that it is the hepatic sinusoids where the portal vein is blood is mixing with the hepatic arterial blood. So, free mixing of portal blood and hepatic uh, arterial blood takes place in the sinusoids. So, then the tributaries of the portal vein are depicted in this figure. Uh, one can make out uh, 4 is the cystic vein entering the right branch of the portal vein that is 3, uh, 5 is the paramlical vein entering the left branch of portal vein, 1 is the portal vein and then uh, 6 and 7 they are the left and right gastric uh, veins which are entering the portal vein, 8 is the superior pancreatic or duodenal vein, 9 is the splenic vein and 10 is the superior mesenteric vein which is uniting, 9 and 10 are uniting to form 1 that is the portal vein. So, all these are the tributaries of the portal system. Left gastric vein accompanies the corresponding artery. At cardiac end of stomach, it receives a few esophageal veins. Now, if you see in the figure on the left hand side, 6 is representing the left gastric vein and 7 are the esophageal tributaries of the accessory hemiazygous vein. Paramblical veins are small veins that run in the falciform ligament along ligamentum teres and establish anastomosis between veins of anterior abdominal wall present around umbilicus and portal vein. So, uh, if you look at 1 and 2 in the figure on the left hand side, you 1 is the, are the paramblical veins and uh, uh, 2 are the veins around the anterior abdominal wall. So, now we come to the concept of portosystemic anastomosis. It is a concept which is very important to understand because this concept has uh, uh, clinical implications. That uh, in our body, there are some sites where the portal system is anastomosing with the systemic system. Now, there are two different systems, portal system and systemic system. Portal system refers to the portal vein. So, that means it is draining the abdominal part of the alimentary tract, gallbladder, pancreas and spleen. So, what are systemic veins? Systemic veins are our superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava is entering the right atrium from above and inferior vena cava is entering it from below. So, they are the systemic veins. Now, in our body, God has given such a wonderful mechanism that uh, although the systemic and portal veins are anastomosing with each other, there is no free flow of blood through them until of course, there is obstruction in the portal vein. When there is obstruction in the portal vein and the blood pressure in the portal vein which can be measured by splenic puncture, it rises above a cr critical limit. Then what happens is these sites of portosystemic anastomosis, they open up. So, these communications between the portal system and systemic system are there, but they are not opened up. They will open up only when there is raised portal pressure and when it is this portal pressure has exceeded a critical limit, then the portal system communicates with the systemic system, the sites are opened up and due to opening up of these sites, we are able to visualize the clinical manifestations of portosystemic anastomosis. That is the person may have caput medusa that is radiating veins around the umbilicus, the person may have tortuous enlarged and dilated veins in the esophagus. Now, tortuous enlarged and dilated veins in the esophagus can be very dangerous because during instrumentation or eating something, these veins can rupture and the hematomesis can be so violent and sufficient that it may even cause fatality, it may even cause death of the person. Then again, bleeding from the rectum, 
that cause gives a big alarm to the patient bleeding from the rectum this also can be attributed to protosystemic anastomosis opening up in relation to the rectum so there are numerous sites we will take them one by one but it's very important to understand the concept of protosystemic anastomosis and for your benefit i'm going to repeat it again there is a portal system in our body comprising of the portal vein and its tributaries. There is a systemic system in our body comprising of the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava and their tributaries. Now portal and systemic veins do meet but the anastomosis is not opened up. The anastomosis will open up only when the portal pressure exceeds a certain level and in that case the veins where, there, where the anastomosis has opened up the veins will become, systemic veins will become tortuous, enlarged and dilated. They are liable to rupture and so there will be clinical manifestations. Now we will discuss the each area where portosystemic anastomosis is taking place and try to explain the anatomical basis of the clinical manifestation in each region. So moving forwards, caput medusa. Caput medusa there's a, there's a lady in Greek mythology called Medusa. She had, she had serpents on her head and the appearance of the serpents was like veins radiating in relation to the umbilicus. This appearance is called caput medusa. So this appearance indicates that the portosystemic anastomosis pertaining to the umbilicus has opened up. Clinical sign is caput medusa and large veins are seen radiating from umbilicus. Here what is happening is that the anastomosis between the paraumbilical veins in falciform ligament, now these paraumbilical veins are coming from the left branch of portal vein. So they are the portal component and subcutaneous veins in the anterior abdominal wall, they are tributaries of inferior vena cava. So this is the systemic component. So this anastomosis has opened up here. Blood from portal tributaries is directed into caval tributaries causing their dilatation and tortuosity. Now why this happens? Why portal hypertension takes place when the pressure in the portal system is increased? And why does the pressure in the portal system increase? The pressure in the portal system increases when there is obstruction to flow of blood in the portal system. It may be due to cirrhosis when there is compromise of the uh, blood supply of the uh, liver when the liver bed is markedly obliterated. It may be due to portal vein obstruction or it may be due to Bunty's disease that is uh, associated with hypersplenism and premature destruction of RBCs. So in all these cases, the portal pressure is increased and the por increased portal manifest pressure manifests clinically by opening up of portosystemic anastomosis. Caput medusae, the name has been given, it's a fancy name, it has been given due to resemblance to serpents on head of medusa. And who was Medusa? A mythical lady in Greek mythology. So this figure is very important when we talk of portal hypertension and its clinical sequelae. Now portal hypertension, you see here, uh, one and two represent the area where caput medusae is formed. Six and seven, the esophageal tributaries of left gastric vein, which are portal, are uniting with the esophageal tributaries of accessory hemihyzygous vein that they are represented by 7. So 6 is the portal system, 7 is the systemic system. They are meeting in relation to the upper end of the stomach or the lower end of esophagus. So esophageal tributaries of left gastric vein portal anastomose with esophageal tributaries of accessory hemihyzygous vein. So when this, when this anastomosis open up, then there is dilatation in relation to the esophagus of the veins. This dilatation and tortuosity of veins is referred to as esophageal varices. So lower end of esophagus is also a site other than the umbilicus where these anastomoses can be opened up. The portosystemic anastomosis can be opened up. And this can even be fatal due to hematemesis. Now the blood may come out from these uh, tortuous and enlarged veins in relation to lower part of esophagus during instrumentation, instrumentation or during even when a person is normally having food. Then you see in the figure uh, below, you uh, can make out the 
inferior the splenic vein there is a tributary of the splenic inferior mesenteric vein is entering the splenic vein and this inferior mesenteric vein is going down to become the superior rectal vein so where the superior rectal vein is anastomosing with the middle and inferior rectal vein in the lower part of the figure there you can also see that the anastomosis can be opened up and this manifests as bleeding per rectum so this is also very alarming for the patient then again in the figure you can make out uh, 10 and 11 10 refers to the phrenic veins and intercostal veins 11 refers to the hepatic venules so this is again phrenic and intercostal veins are systemic veins 11 is portal system so here again uh, in relation to the bare area of liver, portosystemic anastomosis is taking place. Again, if you see 8 and 9, now 9 represents the portal system, that is the veins of retroperitoneal organs like uh, colon, duodenum, and 8 represents the vein of, veins of posterior abdominal wall called the veins of retzius and the veins pertaining to the renal capsule. So here again, portosystemic anastomosis is taking place. It is very important to understand the location and the communication between the portal and systemic systems at different sites. Now coming to the lower end of esophagus, we see here the tortuous and enlarged and dilated veins in relation to the lower end of esophagus. These may rupture when a bolus of food is swallowed or upon passage of diagnostic instrumentation leading to severe hemorrhage. This leads to hematemesis or vomiting of blood which can even be fatal. So these conditions are very alarming and their uh, anatomical basis needs to be understood. Now this here we can make out the uh, portosystemic anastomosis in relation to the anal canal. The superior rectal vein anastomosis with the middle and inferior rectal veins. The lower two ones are the middle and inferior rectal vein. So the varicose tributaries of superior and inferior rectal veins give rise to internal and external hemorrhoids or piles respectively. Hemorrhoids in anal canal may be responsible for repeated bleeding per rectum. So hemorrhoids is a very common condition and it is very alarming for the patient and this is the anatomical basis that the portosystemic anastomosis in relation to lower part of rectum have opened up. Now the other site for portosystemic anastomosis is the bare area of the liver. Here the hepatic venules portal anastomos with the phrenic and intercostal veins which are systemic. So you can make out 10 are the phrenic and intercostal veins and 11 are the hepatic venules. Then again posterior abdominal wall, here we are referring to uh, veins marked by nine, 8 and 9 in the figure. Veins of retroperitoneal organs like duodenum, ascending colon and descending colon portal marked by 9. Anastomos with retroperitoneal veins of the abdominal wall, these are called veins of retzius and of renal capsule. These are all systemic channels. Now in the liver, if the ductus venosus remains patent, you see here by, marked by 6 in the figure, ductus venosus is connecting the left branch of portal vein directly with the inferior vena cava. So this also is an example of portosystemic communication. Now see here in the figure on the left hand side, the sequelae of uh, portal hypertension, uh, there may be esophageal varices, there may be hemorrhoids, there may be caput medusa, liver failure with its signs. Uh, so all these are clinical manifestations pertaining to portal hypertension. Now what is the critical pressure level which results in these clinical, clinical manifestations? Normal pressure in the portal system is about 5 to 15 mmHg. This is usually measured by splenic puncture as I mentioned previously also. Uh, in portal hypertension pressure, pressure rises above 40 mmHg. This can be caused by cirrhosis of liver in which the vascular bed is markedly obliterated or Bunty's disease, this is a fashionable name, it actually is a congestive splenomegaly in which premature destruction of RBCs can take place or there may be thrombosis of the portal vein. So all these are the reasons for the portosystemic channels to open up. As I mentioned below, the flow in the portal vein is streamlined. So whatever ingested toxic substances are taken, they will pass from the superior mesenteric vein into the right lobe of liver and toxic changes will take place in the right lobe of liver. This is also the reason why amoebic abscess is more common in the right lobe of the liver because uh, the infection is coming down from the superior mesenteric vein and due to the streamlined flow, it prefers the right lobe of the liver. On the other hand, amino acids, they are absorbed uh, earlier. So in the region of the drainage of inferior mesenteric vein, amino acids like choline and methionine are deficient. 
so their availability to the left lobe due to the laminar flow is less so that is why the deficiency features of methionine and choline uh, resulting in cirrhosis are more prominent in the left lobe of liver compared to the right lobe of liver now on the left side in the figure you can see this is a case of cirrhosis in which the liver bed is markedly obliterated and uh, for cirrhosis, sometimes you know a shunt operation is done. Liver is bypassed. The uh, what happens is that uh, the one of the main portal channels, splenic superior mesenteric or portal vein, is directly anastomosed with inferior vena cava or the left renal vein. Now, what will happen here? I told you initially the main function of the portal vein is to ensure that whatever we ingest is processed in the liver. So here, if we are bypassing the liver by performing the shunt operation, then the deamination which, you, which was to take place in the liver won't take place. So ammonia will have a toxic effect on the brain and what will happen is person may go into coma. So uh, if I read from the slide, in case of cirrhosis of liver, sometimes a shunt operation is done where one of the main portal channels is directly anastomosed with either inferior vena cava or left renal vein. Greatest hazard of such an operation is hepatic coma possibly due to toxic effects of ammonia on the brain. Normally the ammonia absorbed from intestines is deaminated in the liver but after the shunt operation it passes as such in the general circulation. So what we studied today, what I told you today were the clinical manifestations and the etiopathogenesis of portal hypertension. A thorough understanding of this concept is required to be aware of the clinical manifestations and provide adequate treatment and timely treatment. So this is Dr. Gaurav signing off till we meet the next time. Thank you, bye, regards and namaste.